The previous two videos have been pretty abstract, with lots of difficult definitions. In this video, I'm going to be much more focused by talking about the transformations of R2. Understanding the transformations of R2 is a very useful exercise in understanding the general theory, since many of the important aspects of the theory show up here. So I'm talking about transformations from R2 to itself. Since the input and output is two entry vectors, these transformations are represented by two by two matrices. What do these matrices do? What is a linear transformation of R2? It has to preserve the origin, and it has to send lines to lines. Well, it turns out very conveniently that there are f five basic types of transformations, and that all transformations of R2 can be built out of these five types via composition. The five types are rotations around the origin, the origin can't move, so it needs to be an access point for any rotation. Reflections over any line through the origin. Again, the origin can't move, so a line of reflection has to go through the origin. A skew is a transformation that tilts everything over in some direction. The best way to think of a skew is something that takes a square and tilts it into a parallelogram. A dilation is something that stretches or shrinks each axis by some factor making all values in that axis direction smaller or larger. And finally, a projection is collapsing everything to a line, sending every point to the closest point on the line. Again, since the origin can't move, the line must be through the origin. There is even projection to the origin, and that's the transformation that sends everything to the zero vector. These are the types of transformations. What are their matrices? Well, let me start with rotation. By convention, all rotations are measured counterclockwise. A rotation by theta radians has a matrix with entries cos theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, and cos theta. And let me consider some special values. If theta is pi over two, that's a quarter turn, then cosine of pi over two is zero and sine of pi over two is one, so the matrix becomes zero, negative one, one, zero. This is a quarter turn. Likewise, by calculating sine and cosine of pi, this matrix is the half turn. And by calculating sine and cosine of 3 pi over 2, this is the matrix of the 3 quarters turn. In the activities, I'll ask, ask you to apply these matrices to a bunch of vectors to verify that they actually do what I am saying that they do. A reflection is over some line through the origin. A line can be indicated by a direction, and when I want to specify a direction, I do so with a unit vector, a vector of length 1. So if I have a vector of length 1 with coordinates a, b, then the reflection over the line determined by that vector is the matrix with entries a squared minus b squared, 2ab, 2ab, and b squared minus a squared. Again, I can write down some special cases. The unit direction for the x-axis is 1, 0. So I've put, if I put a equals 1 and b equals 0 into this matrix pattern, I get 1, 0, 0, negative 1 as the entries. This is the matrix for reflection over the x-axis. Likewise, this is the matrix for reflection over the y-axis. If I want to reflect over the line y equals x, the diagonal line, then I need the direction 1, 1. But 1, 1 is not a unit vector. The appropriate unit vector is 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. If I put these 1 over root 2s into the pattern, I get the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0. This is the reflection over the diagonal line y equals x. Likewise, this is the reflection over the diagonal line y equals negative x. As with rotations, I'll have you do a number of calculations in the activities to verify that these do what I am saying that they do. I don't have a nice general form for skews, but let me simply give you two examples. These two are skews. The first is a vertical skew. It will take a square in the first quadrant and pull the far edges upward. The second is a horizontal skew. It will take a square in the first quadrant and pull the top edge over to the right. I've already talked about dilation matrices in a previous video. They were matrices with zeros everywhere except for the diagonal of the matrix. The matrix will dilate by a factor of a in the x direction and by a factor of b in the, in the y direction. If either a or b is negative, this also involves a flip over that axis. Finally, projections were also on lines through the origin, like reflections. These lines are indicated 
by a direction using a unit vector. So, if AB is a unit vector showing a line, then the matrix for projection onto that line has coefficients A squared, AB, AB, and B squared. Finally, the projection that sends everything to the origin is just given by the zero matrix. And again, you'll have the opportunity in the activities to play around with these calculations and convince yourself that these matrices actually do perform these actions.